Welcome to the Ashford Teaching and Learning Conference. My name is Margie Esteville, and I will be your host for this session. I'm excited to introduce the many faces of our students, presented by Dr. Jonas Thorberg and Betsy Van Osdown. Both, uh, both people are teaching in the Forbes School of Business. The chat window will be open during this session for your questions and comments, as well as a short Q&A at the close of the session. Now, without further ado, Jonas and Betsy. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very excited to be presenting this to you with Jonas, and hope this is very helpful for you. Um, we'll begin with the next slide, which is our outline. Um, the intent of this presentation is to increase the awareness to all of our faculty about um, who our students are. They come from all walks of life. Some are military, some are, you know, different rangings of education. Um, we want to create an awareness for the university community as a whole and how we can assist our students there for a higher success rate. And also assist the students to adapt to an online learning, which is quite different from a classroom, and ensure that each student has a positive and constructive university learning experience here at Ashford. Turning to the next slide, uh, we have a sample of our summer of students' introductions from our classes, and it's important to recognize that each student is an individual. They have varying backgrounds. Uh, you know, they have families, they may be married, partners, um, they may be returning to school from, for many years of absence from education, and they have their personal lives. And it's important to recognize that each student has a voice and that are important to us as educators and as faculty members, we need to recognize that we need to treat the students as individuals. And as we go through this presentation, you'll gain some insight on what we can do to better support students. Graduation ceremony is a highlight of each student's um, academic adventure. And the faculty are very proud to attend graduation ceremonies where, wherever they're held. And this past October, I attended the graduation ceremony out in San Diego. And here are some of the comments and the students and the excitement and the electricity that they feel that whole weekend. And it's just awesome. Um, what, as Jonas said, you know, some of these students are single moms. Some are military. And it's just awesome. And they also have a strong support system within their family. Moving on to uh, some of the theoretical foundations of the presentation, uh, if you look at the next page, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, it's a classic when it comes to human needs and human motivation. And uh, personally, from attending school, from uh, also a career, um, as human beings, we are motivated by certain things and, and people and places and, and whatever we may have an interest in. And as the students coming to Ashford University, uh, we need to appreciate their motivational needs and what their purpose are for returning to school or attending school for the first time. And if you look at the pyramid, it's obviously there are different needs that uh, Maslow has identified. Uh, but if you look at the, um, starting at the yellow with the heart, we have love and belonging needs. We have esteem needs and self-actualization. And I think those are the most relevant in become, you know, going to school. Uh, as students come to Ashford, they need a sense of belonging. They're going to you know, belong to a university. They're going to have classmates. And also you know, the faculty member is instrumental in uh, making the student feel as they belong and also contribute in the school environment. And the same is with this, you know, esteem needs. The way that we relate to the students, the feedback, the feedback we provide, and how we relate to the students is very important. The manner in how we you know, respond to emails or respond to posts in the classroom, our discussion uh, question responses on how we grade, we need to build the esteem of our students and help them support them emotionally with their esteem needs. And also self-actualization is important because you know, attaining an education
education, feeling as you're learning, feeling as you're growing as an individual, uh, is part of the educational process. And uh, we need to understand that as faculty members that, you know, the love and belonging, the esteem needs, and self-actualization are important elements in motivating and working with our students. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, as, as a part of the learning, each, each of us and every student, we all learn a different way. Some of us are very visual learners, some are auditory. Um, it is best in, in teaching the students, especially in an online mo modality, we're not able to do some of these learning styles, such as the physical. And, um, what we want to do is being online, it is obviously visual. We can provide more links to YouTube or other auditory um, programs to speak to our students directly from the classroom. So that would fulfill more of the auditory and the verbal. And also we provide live chats in the classroom, which provide for the other ways of communication with the student. So the more model, learning modalities that we use to provide the education and the material to our students, the more they will receive as part of their learning. Moving on to the next slide, uh, situational leadership. Uh, and some may wonder how this is relevant to uh, understanding and identifying our student needs, but it is actually very relevant. Uh, situational leadership is known for uh, applying, delegating, participating, selling, and telling methods of behavior and support in working with individuals in the work environment. And that applies distinctly to what we do with our students. Uh, our students come in with varying backgrounds. Um, some students have certain strengths and weaknesses, and it varies between each individual student. And as faculty member, we need to appreciate where the students are in the learning process as, as a student, but also working adult, because we apply the correct behavior, the supporting behavior to the student in the classroom. For example, if we have a brand new student that has been in school for many, many years, we want to make sure that we are there to delegate in a sense, support them strongly throughout the classroom. We give them very specific feedback. We may encourage them to call us or send them emails on a weekly basis to follow up on their work. However, if you have someone uh, that has a lot of experience in college and is maybe about to graduate, they may not need the same support. And uh, we need to motivate them still and support them, but it's not the same kind of directed support behavior as someone who's brand new in college. So that's why it's important to, to consider the situational leadership style as important as we work with the students. Individual student needs, as we alluded to, um, again, they come from different demographics. Some are from families. Some are jointed families. Some are military. Some with students come to us with accommodations, and they would be receiving help through our access and wellness. Um, their work experience, some are coming right out of um, high school and others have been in the workforce for, you know, 30, 30 years or more. And so they're looking at a second career to do. And they could, we've had students as old as in their 80s and 90s. Um, previous educational accomplishments, Again, they could have just a high school degree or maybe just an associate degree, and they want to better themselves and move themselves up within their um, employment and job. Technology proficiencies seems to be the biggest hurdle, but we can overcome it. Many students have varying backgrounds dealing with technology. Some may not even own a laptop or a computer yet, and so we work to try to get them to where they're proficient and they run the programs that are needed to for them to be successful. And a lot of them do pick it up very quickly. Moving on to the next slide, um, how the university can assist students. And uh, this is uh, 
very important because it is the students need to have a successful foundation in entering Ashford University. Uh, and you know this is going to be through enrollment services and also as they come into our classroom and anyone they work with in the university as they begin, we need to establish positive relationships with the students. They need the foundation of knowing that they're in a safe place and that they're going to be learning with Ashford University. Uh, we need to establish trusting relationships uh, whenever they have questions or they have issues in the classroom or admissions. They need to be able to reach out to someone and know they're going to get answers. With that being said, responsiveness is, is so important, especially in the online environment. You know, in a traditional classroom, you can ask, ask someone more or less face to face or stop by an office, but online that's different. So sending out an email and not obtaining a response can be frustrating to the students. So we have to have relationships that are based on trust and that we are responsive. And the information we share needs to be accurate and also timely um, because they rely on us with providing accurate information. So when we start in a class or send any kind of information to the students, we want to make sure it's the latest and updated version of information uh, so the students can make uh, correct decisions on that and, and, um, and be successful. And also consistency. Uh, and that goes throughout the entire university administration and support services. We have to be consistent in how we deal with the students and treat students the same and make sure that they have a positive learn online learning experience. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, successful foundation, student course room experience. Um, from a faculty point of view, as um, Margie said, Jonas and I both teach here for Ashford University. And students really all they see is a computer screen. But what, how we can make the course room active and pop is provide, you know, very almost three, not three-dimensional announcements, but, you know, maybe interactive ones. Um, what I do from my experience is I look for um, scholarly articles, and I'll put that link in with a discussion response to the students. The students love receiving the extra information about the content for that learning week. Also, um, when you provide a response to a discussion board to the student, a lot of times they'll respond back. And they'll, they may have, hey, this happened at my work today, and it's, you know, they want to share with you. Keep that conversation going. And it's really, it's very rewarding for the student, because then they begin to feel that they are in a live classroom. Communication, students are, some are, you know, hesitant to reach out to faculty. I put right from the get-go, you know, please feel free to ask me questions. I email them midway through the course and say, hey, how's it going? Just trying to get a, you know, a pulse on the class. How's it going for you? Are you overwhelmed? Do you need anything? I'm here to assist you. I always provide my phone number in the classroom so students can reach me that way because a lot of times storms hit their area and internet goes down, so they need to reach out by phone. Timely information. You want to make sure your content information is up to date and the most current that's available out there. Uh, consistency. Always provide the first best person class service as a faculty member at all times, from the first day of class to the last day of class when final grades are entered. Students rely on that consistency, and it's one parameter that they can always count on. Accurate and rel relevant feedback is important for students. For them to grow and to be successful and to learn from their mistakes from the previous week, we need, as faculty, provide very um, rich feedback to the students and help them you know, maybe the error is only APA, or maybe it's, you know, formatting or something else. Or, you know, they may have some content in error. It's up to us to help them along the way and make sure that they are receiving the correct information. Moving on to uh, the next slide, um, course room foundation and experience. As students come into the university and also throughout each class, 
we do have a number of resources available to the student in addition to the faculty member. Um, we do have the faculty support and development associate. Um, they're strongly and heavily involved with student and faculty engagement. They're a resource for the students, but also to the faculty. They are a support system that that's a fail safe to the students if they have any additional questions. Uh, but also faculty members can reach out to the FSBA if they have any questions about specific situations. Of course, the students all have the academic advisors. Uh, it's a general support and advisement. And as a faculty member, um, I actually stay in touch with the academic advisors here at the Sun Road building. Um, if I have a student in a class that may not be doing as well or have not turned in assignments, I reach out to the academic advisor and that academic advisor can reach out to the student uh, in addition to myself, of course. And that's a way for ensuring that the student gets the support that's needed. Um, also, of course, military student advising. Uh, they can help the students who are in the armed forces. And I've had a number of students in my courses that are in the military, and they often communicate in where they're at or what they're doing, or if they're being sent out to serve uh, on active duty, I work with them on assignments and things like that to make sure they're taken care of. Uh, of course, also access and wellness. If students need accommodations, uh, they will work with the Access and Wellness Office, and the information will be provided to us accordingly. And as faculty members, we respect and honor and adhere to those requests. And often, when I have students on Access and Wellness, I will send emails once in a while just to make sure that they're doing okay to try to be proactive in, in working with a student. On the next slide, um, the student online learning experience, they enter entry point, what we call entry point classes. A lot of times it's EXP 105 or it could be something else at a different university. The first thing they're linked with is their academic advisor and together they're figuring out where the student is at on a technological proficiency. How much do they learn? Are they able to manipulate through a spreadsheet or Excel or you know, some of the other programs that are required in our classes. Time management, I love teaching this part in my classroom. I do it from within the first week and I give them tips that I know will help them. And at the end of the class, they're always thank thankful that somebody took the time to teach them time management. We have to keep in mind these students are, you know, probably working adults. They have families, they, they you know, military. They still have an obligation to our country and to their unit. So any kind of tip to help them with time management, getting the work in. Um, even faculty that I work with, I've told them, you know, if you guys are traveling, try doing the discussion boards on your mobile app. And they're so thankful because it's like, oh my gosh, I can do this on the go. And, you know, so time management is a fun piece to teach. Um, communication. Always, you know, offer an open line or keep an open line of communication with your students. And it's, as Jonas alluded to, it's great to keep in contact with the advisors as well because as a team, we're helping the students get through the university to get to graduation. I encourage proactive versus reactive. I encourage my students to, I know life happens. It happens to all of us. Um, to be proactive. If they know they have a pending surgery coming up, as an example, you know, let your instructor know this ahead of time and your advisor because then we can make adjustments or make arrangements for you to help to help the students out. Accommodations, I work closely with Access and Wellness and together they're part of the team as well as the advisor and the instructor to help the student be successful here at Ashford. Um, the Access and Wellness Office makes the playing field even for every student to learn and to fulfill their academic needs. Course room and resource navigation, the advisors do this with every student that enters Ashford. And they do a walkthrough of a live classroom. And they show them where 
where to find the textbook, where to look for feedback in the gradebook, where to post, you know, the ask your instructor questions and discussions, as well as uploading the paper into the classroom. And this is really helpful as they enter your classroom. Moving on to the next slide. Um, so for the students to have a positive and constructive learning experience, we kind of combined the theoretical foundation that we've discussed of Maslow and the learning styles and also situational leadership. We kind of narrow that down and look at this slide uh, as faculty or administrators or whatever our responsibilities are. Uh, if we're at FSBA or uh, working with access and wellness, we need to build positive relationships with the students. Uh, we have to provide timely support and empower our students. As situational leadership alluded at, uh, if someone is brand new, we need to directively support them and guide them and work with them often to grow into more experienced students. So we can do this, we can empower the students to take ownership of their own education. And also, you know, building the confidence, and that relates to Maslow and the self-esteem needs and motivations of, of simply human beings. And uh, we are part of that as faculty, specifically as we work with the students. And of course, self-actualization, uh, we need to feel that we can achieve what we want to achieve. And uh, we can help the students do that by having positive course learning experiences and also graduate and ultimately prepare them for um, a positive career where they can contribute and they can feel that uh, they're important and they can work in a local community. Okay, we've come to the end of our presentation and we've shown you the intent, and the, hopefully we've increased your awareness of all of the students who attend Ashford University and many universities across the world. Um, individual student needs, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to your FSDA or um, your program chair for assistance or with any questions. We're always here to help you. The community as a whole can assist students to initiate their studies. We do this through the advising and the enrollment. Um, helping students adapt to the online environment is important, and also to ensure that each student has a positive and constructive university experience here by providing expert content, content expert instructors as well as staff. At this time, once again, Dr. Jenna Thorberg and Betsy Van Austin uh, for your presentation. Thanks for all of you in the audience for attending. This presentation will be available for viewing in the CETL, and we will send out an email when the live sessions are available. Don't forget to go to the TLC app and rate this session, and look for an end-of-day survey to uh, provide more feedback. Thank you all.